Welcome! Most of us probably want to be powerful, fit and happy. Now you will probably ask yourself, how is that possible? My answer is with the power of science. But first, a brief introduction of myself. My name is Michael Goat. I am an InstaHelp psychologist and neuropsychologist. And during my professional life, I have specialized in the area of peak performance. The first time I came into contact with this topic was as a student at the age of 15. In the first grade of high school, I had no less than five grades of F in my mid-year report. Our class as a whole was so bad that a school psychologist even came to look at the situation in our class. His advice, however, was quite sobering. Immediately, he said to me, five Fs can't be made up. You should repeat the class right away. After a short phrase of disillusionment, a certain resistance rose in me. I thought something like this, challenge accepted. And behold, I was able to make up all the Fs and I didn't even have a re-examination during the vacations. That's one of the reasons why this topic is so important to me personally. That's why I want to give you the most important know-how in this lecture so that you can develop your full potential and become more powerful, fitter and happier without burning out. But first we have to look at the biology behind it, especially the so-called neuroplasticity. Not too long ago, scientists thought that our brains were hardwired and that the brain could not change after childhood. However, recent findings have shown this to be false. Our brain can change and the process behind it is called neuroplasticity. In our brain, there are countless neural networks, which are connected between individual neurons in our brain. And these paths between the individual nerve cells become stronger the more often we think, feel or do something. Maybe you should think of it as a network of roads. Some paths are almost like a highway. The brain then uses this quite happily and without much effort. But if we then adopt new behaviors, new roads will be built and a small farm road can become an eight lane highway over the time and the old roads will now be less traveled. So we all have the possibility to change our brain via neuroplasticity and thus to tread completely new paths and thus to unfold completely new potentials. And with that, we have already arrived in the practical part. If you want to make use of neuroplasticity, you have to consider that there are so-called neuroplastic windows. That is, the neuroplasticity is not activated at all times. In some situations, of course, it is increased. Here, the distinction between acute stress and chronic stress is also important. Acute stress is when we are spontaneously challenged by something. So, for example, you should quickly find a solution to a problem. So-called neurotrophic factors are released. The brain tries to adapt, thus to adapt. But if the demands don't leave and you don't have time to recover in between, then it can quickly turn into a chronic stress load. Here, neurotrophic factors are inhibited and the worst case is that it even can lead to burnout or depression. So, you notice that neuroplasticity here can even be linked to something fundamental as depression. So, how do you reduce stress and also increase neuroplasticity at the same time? One of the most effective methods is you might be surprised to hear from a psychologist is to exercise. 
and the formation of new neurons can be significantly stimulated by exercise. The reason is probably the increase of the so-called growth factors in the blood. The current state of research is that physical exercise has a very positive effect on learning and memory among other things. Exercise every day and do it with moderate intensity. We're talking about the aerobic zone here. This encompasses 70 to 80 percent of your maximum heart rate. So, for example, if someone has a maximum heart rate of 187 beats per minute, the training zone would be 131 to 150 beats per minute. According to WHO recommendations, people between the age of 18 and 65 should get between 150 and 300 minutes moderate exercise per week. The brain builds thousands of new neurons every day and through specific actions, this value can be doubled and even tripled and this is one key of peak performance. Prolonged stress, on the other hand, has a destructive effect on neurons and especially on the hippocampus. So the part in our brain that is responsible for memory. So we realize that stress can be massively affect us on the way to peak performance and here a study showed highly interesting finding. Attitude towards stress plays a significant role. It started with a study that showed that the sm small proportion of participants who viewed stress as something positively were 43% less likely to die an early death than the others. So some people have learned that they don't see stress as a threat, but as a challenge, it is, as something productive and the prerequisite for growth. For example, someone who has a challenge response and focuses on what it is or her power has lower levels of anxiety and nervousness. This response not only helps to cope better with stress, but actually helps you perform at your best. Maybe try this. When you experience stress again, remind yourself that the only reason your body goes on alert is to better prepare for challenge. So try to look at stress as something productive and welcome it. Not only you will perform much better, but you'll also be doing something for your health. So how do you do this? Of course, it takes some practice, but as you have already heard, a change in our brain and thus in our thinking is possible at any ages. For example, you can try to look at the following emotions in a new light. Anger. It can block your attention and weakens your performance. Or you can see this energy that drives and motivates you and reminds you what, it, what is important. Fear. Fear. It can remind you of past bad decisions, steal your attention and weaken your performance. Or it can make you more prudent in your decisions, lead you to self-reflections or inspire new changes. Sadness. It can flatten your emotions and demotivate you. Or lead you to change your environment, circumstances and behavior and set new priorities. And yes, of course, we can't and we shouldn't demand ourselves non-stop. And it's precisely the periods of rest that are immensely important. As living beings, we are geared to recover repeatedly and regularly. And there I would like to mention sleep first. People sleep on average one third of their lifetime. And that is good because this allows our brain and body to recover and we can use our waking time more effectively and better. So how much should we sleep? Here I can tell you that it is very individual, but the vast majority of people need between seven and nine hours of sleep per night. But you're welcome to test, test this out. Try the following. You have a day off, you go to sleep, and you don't set an alarm clock the next day. You have free time. 
Then count how many hours you have slept. Do this a few times and you will get the value that is probably optimal for you. I would also encourage you to do regular relaxation exercises. I don't mean sitting in front of the TV as studies have long proven that you don't relax as effectively in front of the TV as you think. Why don't you try some established relaxation exercises like Jacobson, progressive max muscle relaxation, breathing exercises, the body scan or some forms of yoga. Another very effective way to recharge your batteries and improve your performance is to spend time in nature. In doing so, you don't necessarily have to go to a forest, even a park or your own green garden where there is no, not too much hustle and bustle can have a regenerative effect. Surround yourself with people who are good for you and give you strength. A strong social network reduces stress and gives you support. We humans are social beings and that is very important for us. But do not shy away from spending time alone again and again. This time can recharge your battery properly and also give you again the space to respond to your personal and individual needs. As you can see, life is all about finding the right balance. And in order to find this balance, above all, to have someone at your side who can respond to your individual situation. It has proven to be worthwhile to make use of counseling. For example, InstaHealth gives you the opportunity to get in touch with the psychologist of your choice and work together on your personal goals. For example, I was recently contacted by young and high-performing men who expressed the desire to become even more powerful, professionally as well as privately. He had a great job, he was just as successful in his private life and he said it was not enough for him and that he wanted to perform even better. After a short conversation, we came to the conclusion that an inner stress leads to the fact that he wants to perform even better. If we compare this with a car, we could say that the young man has a Porsche and he was always on the gas pedal. With a car, however, it is always important in everyday life to use the brake in order to reach the destination safely. And so, among other things, we discussed together what he could do in terms of brake management and what relaxation exercise he could incorporate into his daily routine. And so he reached two goals at the same time. The internal stress is reduced and at the same time the desired increase in performance takes place. And here is a small example to illustrate how powerful and fascinating your brain is. Try reading this for yourself. And after that, there comes an exercise. Just name the color of the word it is written. Do not read the word, just name the color. And now I would love to show you the box breathing. It's a very powerful relaxation exercise that can lead to instant relaxation. Follow with me. Okay, you breathe in four seconds through the nose. Then you hold your breath for four seconds and then you breathe out for four seconds. You hold your breath for four seconds and now you repeat it. Do it with me 10 times. Slow relaxation breathing. We breathe in. Hold your breath and now you breathe out.
you breathe in Five more times. You breathe in. Hmm, okay, now open your eyes, shake your body, okay, how do you feel? Thank you for your time and for your attention. And if you have any comments or questions, feel free to post them in the comment section. Thank you very much.